You are listening to Beyond the Wheel, a podcast about the people and ideas that drive the RV community forward. Looking to get out there and stay out there? Battleborn Batteries Lithium Ion Batteries are here to power your RV, marine, and off grid adventures. Designed as an easy drop in replacement for traditional lead acid batteries, these reliable solutions have two to three times the power, charge five times faster are a fifth of the weight, and last 10 times longer. Offered in a variety of models in unique sizes and shapes, ranging from 50 amp hour to a robust 270 amp hour, and backed by a 10-year warranty. Battleborn batteries are built to fit your needs and power your experiences. On the road, on the water, and off the grid, reliable power is here. Check them out at battlebornbatteries.com. Hey everybody, today on Driver's Edition, it's a very special Driver's Edition because we are sitting in the kitchen of the chicories. That's right, we're hanging out with Sean and Julia's here, and we also have Sabrina, but it's rare. Actually, this is the first Driver's Edition that we have ever done in person together. Yeah, we've only done the different rallies and events. Mm -hmm. We've never, this is the first like actual podcast that we're doing live. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. I like this in-person stuff. <laughs> uh, Sabrina and I are product testing a Winnebago Travato, and we're kind of just driving around on the East Coast and stopping by other people's houses and mooch docking, I think it's called, or driveway <laughs> surfing or something like that. And while we were here, Sean and I thought it would be a really good idea to come on live and record this driver's edition. So... I asked Sabrina if she wanted to sit down as well and time, kind of talk about the experience of the Winnebago Travato and how different it is coming from a Class A motorhome down to a van and trying this van life. And you should say what, what, uh, what Travato is it? Oh, yeah. So we have a Winnebago Travato, and it is a 59KL. So it's got the twin beds, and it's the one with the wet bath all the way in the back of the van. There's also a Travato 59GL, and that has the bathroom kind of like mid, midway and the bedroom in the back. Does that sound right? It has like a Murphy bed type with the garage storage underneath. Oh, and garage the storage. That's off right. Off to the side a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we hear for solo travelers, that seems to be the more popular, uh, popular floor plan because they get a little gear garage. And it's just one person. They drop the bed down when they when they need to use it. I like this one for the two of us. Same length though. Same length, twenty one feet. feet. Yep, yep. So we went from a twenty eight and a half foot Class A down to a twenty one <laughs> foot van. <laughs> we had three slides in our Class A. No slides in this. <laughs> so I think that's really when we notice the biggest difference is when we park and set up that we lose those slide spaces. I bet you with the slides out, we have to be. At least double the square footage, you know, with our slide down. So how is it driving? So I felt pretty comfortable driving it. And as you, well, you may not know, but I don't really enjoy driving our Vista, our class A motorhome, but the van is very easy to drive. It has cameras for reversing, rear view mirror cameras. It has blind spot monitoring. I felt pretty comfortable driving it, which was quite surprising. I don't feel comfortable with her driving. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. He did not take a nap. <laughs> she scares me. <laughs> but what about you, Kenny, compared to the Class A? It's, it's very, it is comfortable driving wise. I'm having a difficult time getting like a great, I'm, I'm better now. The first couple of days, I could not get the seating position. And it's a small little cab area compared to our Class A that has a giant lazy boy for for a driver's seat. So this is like, you know, your standard van size seat, but I felt like my knees were close to the dash and I still feel that way, but I did get a more comfortable uh, seating position and using the cruise control on the highway, I can kind of just relax my legs and it does okay. But I would say like long distance wise, I think our class A is more comfortable. This is just easier to drive. The wind doesn't bother us as much. Track trailers don't bother as much. It has like a crosswind stabilization built into it like software wise it feels like a little sports car when we're driving around compared to our business i mean it just shoots up hills and everything like that but as far as the seating goes um, i'm giving it to class a as far as seating goes but drivability flexibility it's definitely the travato beats our class a <laughs> yeah. also at the gas pump 
Yeah. Big difference. <laughs> a big difference at the gas pump. 24, 24 gallons is getting us uh, over 400 miles. It's got, we're averaging like 15, 16 miles per gallon in the Travado, and we only get eight miles per gallon in the Vista. So the Travado's got it there too. <laughs> and Kenny gave us a tour, and I was pretty surprised at the amount of storage on there. So it does have a lot of storage, especially for Sabrina, because we're doing it 80-20. Oh. Sabrina's <laughs> taking up 80% of the storage, and I get 20% of the storage. But it does. It uses, like um, I would say, like a traditional airline cabin where it just has like the storage bays all lined up along the two uh, edges of the roof line. It's got storage underneath the bed. It's got storage in the bathroom. There's even like a little wardrobe. We got storage above the cab area. They're all mine. It's all Sabrina's. It's all Sabrina's. We have a little, I don't know, hidden compartment down on the floor. We put a, like almost a case of water in there. It is almost all yours because Sabrina brought like her step. She brought workout. Aerobic step. Yeah, yeah her aerobic step and a little bit of workout equipment. And uh, she wanted to bring the air fryer. So the air fryer came with us. I don't know what else you got in those cabinets. It's okay, but anything I have brought, I have been using. So that's that's what matters. <laughs> and my clothes, I think I brought about half of my clothes in the van that I had in the Vista. Oh, really? Yeah, I think oh, I brought wow. about half of them. He knows. <laughs> Kenny knows. <laughs> He's tripping over them. But I think I brought about half of them because I usually keep my clothes in dividers. And I just took out half the dividers and brought them in the van with me. It was surprising that we were able to fit as much as we, we could in there. We would have had room for our Tembo Tusk. It might have been a little bit of a challenge to bring it. I didn't bring it because I packed it in our Vista, but then I forgot the burner because I took the burner out of it to clean it and then forgot to put it back in. So we didn't bring that. So we're not doing any like outside cooking or anything like that. But I, I would imagine that is like the, you're supposed to be doing that with van life. I think you're supposed to be cooking inside. Yeah. But this has a decent kitchen inside. I was actually showing Julie the kitchen and it does have like an L-shaped countertop that flops up. So plenty of room for counter space. It's got a microwave. It's an induction cooktop that we've never used before. I don't, have you ever used an induction yeah. cooktop? Yeah. 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 We're amazed by how fast that pan gets hot. Yeah. It's super efficient. And it cools really fast it cools too. It cools really fast too. I think for now on, all future RVs that we purchase, we would like to have that induction cooktop. That's been a really... That's been, I think, one of the surprising things about this is just how much we like that induction cooker because mm -hmm. we've never used one before. And this is your guys' first experience with a wet bath, right? Oh, yeah. yes. And yes. what are the thoughts on that? It's getting better. <laughs> it is. I wouldn't discount it the way I was before. Before we uh, product tested this RV, I, wet baths were a no for me. Absolutely not. Mm. I'm not bumping into a toilet mm. while I'm showering. Mm. None of that. And then after being in there, it's really not bad. And it's not as scary as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I know when Sabrina and I were shopping for RVs before, if it had a wet bath, we just automatically discount it and be like, no, that's not for us. But after having this for nine days now, we're to the point that it's comfortable. It doesn't seem gross like we thought it would be. We're, I, I think we're kind of fortunate in the fact that we were able to product test this and get a firsthand experience of it so that we know in the future when shopping for an RV that a wet bath is not as scary as I don't know what we thought was going to happen in there. <laughs> a monster was going to yeah, come but out. It, it's really not scary at all. But I also think it depends on where that shower is located in yeah. your RV because we've been in other vans. Um, and if it's like a mid bath, you don't get that same type of space. Like this takes up almost the entire rear of the van. And I think the location of the shower could probably really change your opinion on how much you enjoy the wet bath or not. I, get, I think my question about the wet bath is, like that whole bathroom area gets wet, how quickly does it drain and dry? So it drains real fast, but I do clean out that drain every other day because you're stepping in that same area that's right. drain. So as your shoes, your, your socks have little fuzzies on them, I'm cleaning that drain every other day because there's little fuzzies and dirt getting in there. So you definitely have to be more aware of that drain and make sure that's staying cleaned out. But other than that, it dries pretty quick. It has an exhaust fan in there. And what we've been doing is we'll leave the bathroom doors open. And while we're driving with the AC on, it seems that all the air goes back there. We even sometimes will drive with the exhaust fan on. And by the time we stop for the first time in the day, it's, everything's dried up pretty good. And I'm wiping stuff down too as well. 
And this one does not have a generator. It has solar. It has solar, no generator. It's got a big, big battery. Giant battery, but we are running into issues with it. It's not as, I'll say it's not as reliable as our Battleborn battery system. And I'm not saying that because we're Battleborn (laughs) battery ambassadors (laughs) or that Battleborn you know, sponsors of our podcast because we're also Winnebago ambassadors. And of course we wouldn't want to say anything about <laughs> Winnebago either, but apples, apples or oranges, oranges, we would go with a Battleborn system over this Volta Absolutely. system. We're having a weird issue with it. We did contact Winnebago about it. Uh, we're actually expecting a phone call today about it. They said, it seems like a very odd system or odd problem that we're having. They said it's not the norm. So we'll, we'll find but out. But as far as just power goes, Plenty of plenty power, of power for mm-hmm. everything you want to do. You don't need necessarily need to worry about getting somewhere with a plug. No, no. it's super easy that way. So mm-hmm. it's got 9.6 kilowatt battery, which is enormous. <laughs> That's a, it's like the size of three game changers, I think is what it uh, uh, converts to. It also has a second alternator that charges that battery, and it can put 6,000 watts of power per hour into the battery off the alternator so it charges that giant battery really fast too i feel like if we drive for like an hour hour and a half it's back to 100 percent. yeah hour and a half seems to seems to do it to get the power back into it and then we're able to run the ac unit for eight nine hours our problem has been is that for some reason the system every once in a while does a reboot right in the and it seems to be in the middle of the night every time (laughs) like three to five a.m we're not sure what's going on with it but battle or uh winnebago is looking into it for us to figure out but yeah i mean the the volta system if it didn't have that one issue man it would be it would mm-hmm. be fabulous yeah it would it would be just like our battleborn system that we have because you turn it on once and you just leave it on unless you're on put it in storage so in in essence it's just always on you have 30 amp power everywhere you go no matter where you're staying yeah, in theory, that worked great. Yeah, and I like how it's set up that I don't really have to think too much about mm-hmm. what I'm using. So I can use the air fryer, and if I start the microwave while the air conditioning's on, everything is under what it's capable of. Yeah. So we haven't run into any issues of tripping breakers or anything Nothing. like that because they've built it so that it manages its own power system. Yeah, it's a really strong system. It's Yeah, like Sabrina said, we have not been able to, and she tries. She's oh, got, my gosh. She's got <laughs> AC, air fryer, and microwave all going on at the same time, and like no problem at all. Yeah. Or induction cooktop. Usually it's a like microwave induction cooktop and the AC at the same time, which normally that's that's a lot of three mm-hmm. heavy yeah. power loads. But yeah, the system, like I said, it's a really robust system that way. You don't have a, another vehicle with you. So this is also like the daily driver yeah. Yeah. when you guys are going places. Have you guys found it easy. difficult in any way? No, so far it's really easy. We'll find out more when we get to Southern uh, Virginia because Sabrina's got like doctor's appointments so we'll be standing at a campground then we'll just pack up in the morning I'll be driving her to her appointments and dropping her off kind of like you said like a, a daily driver and then when I drop her off then I'll just take Belle somewhere we'll see maybe do, do some like little nature walks not hiking like <laughs> a little nature walk somewhere and then we'll come back and pick Sabrina up but it's fast to set up it's fast to pack up there's no slides there's no jacks it's kind of weird but it doesn't feel as if it's out of level even when it is out of level maybe because of short wheelbase or just because it's smaller well we're not as high i bet you that has a lot to do with it you know our floor in our class a probably starts you know at chest height whereas (laughs) the floor in this is actually below (laughs) you you almost step down into this compared to stepping up into so maybe that's why but we haven't had to level it or anything like that so typically we just pull the sunshades off and we drive off, and, and that's it. Same thing when we park for tonight. We just put the sunshades up, and we're kind of set up for tonight. So that's, what about, that's like, have you gone to a grocery store or anything yeah. with it? Yep. And it so, fits in a parking space? Oh, or, yeah. yeah. Well. Two parking spaces? If you can get a parking space along the edge, you can back in, and then you're good. But at 21 feet, most of these spaces we're finding are, like, 18 to 19 yeah. feet long. So if you can find a parking space along the edge, we back in, and no problem. If we have to park in the center part portion of the lot, then we are taking up two spots. Yeah. But it's um it's got power mirrors, so the power the mirrors will suck in and it fits width wise. It's a length issue though. But it, I think if we were to purchase a van, we'd actually try to go even a little smaller for what, what we want to do anyway. Right, which we w- would have never said before <laughs> no, we we actually said that. <laughs> taking yeah. this van out. Yeah. But I mean we very rarely do you hear that. Right. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> but we uh 
we've stopped at little convenience stores. We've stopped at little restaurants, not even restaurants, like in strip malls. I've done U-turns in the middle of the street. So maneuverability wise, it's great. And even parking wise, you know, we stayed at a Cracker Barrel one night. We stayed at a couple driveways now. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. We, did we stay at a rest area yet or a Flying J? Uh, I don't think I like so. We stayed in one of those two things, but possibly, but it, the nice thing is in our class A, when we're stopping or looking for a place to stop for tonight, that's not a campground. We usually bring up like a satellite map mm-hmm. of the Flying J to see if there's enough space for a vehicle the size of our class A, whereas this we're not even bothering because we know where we're going. We'll find a spot. Yeah. And I guess too, with the class A, you usually have a tow vehicle with you. Usually too. have our tow vehicle behind it too. But yeah. even even without the tow vehicle, there's not always parking for it. It's too wide. So the class our class A is eight foot ten. No, eight foot five. Eight foot five wide. So that's usually our issue. We're only twenty eight feet in our class A, which is too long for any parking space too, but it's usually a width issue, like not being able to park in a spot and then open our door. So Oh, okay. Our class A, even without a tow car, usually takes up four spaces <laughs> okay. just to make sure that we can open our door. So overall, sounds pretty positive. Yeah, I've it, really enjoyed it. We've enjoyed it more than we thought we would, actually. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, so this was really Sabrina's, Sabrina's thing has been for a long time that she's wanted a van or like weekend trips or long, like little short extended weekend trips and stuff like that and i'm like ah, i like our vista but this this is slowly winning me over and it's been a better experience than i was i really thought that we would be on top of each other all the time and just uncomfortable and banging into each other and which happens i'm banging into cupboards more than <laughs> yeah. you <laughs> and bell you know we've, we've hit bell a few times Stepped we dropped her. a pillow on her we've dropped <laughs> sunshades, on, sunshades her. on her <laughs> we've kicked her a couple times <laughs> but it really has been easier than I thought to get comfortable in, in the, in the little van. Yeah. Well, my, what I thought was it wouldn't have been possible for you guys to stop at people's houses as easy no, as we as been able to. with the van, even the ro- some of the roads getting to the houses have been like tight little roads. And I I've said multiple times this, I'm like, I don't even think I would drive the Vista down mm-hmm. this road or this road. Like, yeah, I, it's super convenient for the van. Yeah, I would say that the, the van is a very convenient way to travel. Mm-hmm. I think you were even mentioning that. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. And you guys are doing um, some YouTube videos and also lots of Instagram reels yeah. about the van, too, so doing, people can check that out. Yeah, we've been doing live YouTube videos on our Moving Forward Adventures uh, channel. The lives are just really easy. <laughs> There's no editing or anything. If we mess up, and then... If something goes wrong with the van, we figure, well, it's all live and we can share it. So Winnebago was really good about this vehicle and letting us test this one out for them because it's a vehicle that's been out for a little while. So there's nothing top secret in it. We're allowed to show everything. (laughs) They told us that we could be as honest as we want with it. We don't have to sugarcoat anything. Um, We're allowed to show things that don't work for us because, you know, obviously it's just an, for some things, it's just an opinion based. Serena is almost six feet tall. It is a little tight in the shower at times, but we worked around that. We've come up with different ways that she can get comfortable in the shower. And I'm 220 pounds, so I was a little tight in the shower for different reasons. Um, but again, we, we worked out a system that works best. And I feel now I'm just as comfortable in that shower as I am in our Vista shower. I feel like I have almost the same amount of room anyway. So yeah, they've been, they were really good about us, allowing us to share the experience as it's happening and being very truthful about it i guess Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's good for people to go check that stuff out because you're there's lots of people that think about vans from a class a or Mm -hmm. a fifth wheel or a travel trailer and you guys are given like the real opinion about yeah we're being pretty pretty honest with it (laughs) i'll just say one comment on the bathroom i think it was harder to come from the apartment to the vista bathroom Yes. Than it has been to come from the Vista to the van bathroom. Oh, really? Yeah. When I when when I first came to from the apartment to the Vista bathroom, I remember I was banging into the walls all the time. <laughs> I was like injuring myself mm-hmm. in there, and I had to like say for the first couple of weeks, I'm not going to let five minutes of my day in the shower ruin my day. And that was like the mantra I had to have. And then coming into this shower, it was just like, oh, it's a wet bath. Let's give this a try. And then I'm like, oh, this isn't bad. And I adjusted to it a lot easier than if I had. <laughs> than going from the apartment to the I, I think that could be said true about the entire van experience though i think coming from an apartment right to a van oh and yeah. we would have been like 
what in the world is this? <laughs> but going from a you know apartment to a class A to a van, baby steps. Yeah, I, I think that has made a world of a difference too. And just the fact, I mean, you would have had to have gotten not only a smaller space, but you would have had to have gotten to the tanks, and it would have been, I think, an overwhelming experience. I think the best thing anybody could probably do is maybe rent a van for a weekend and see what they think of it, especially if they're coming from a house or an apartment to van life. Yeah, I think maybe a week. Yeah. 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 That's true. I, I would, I mean, a week would be better. They're just really expensive. They're like yeah. 350 bucks a night to, to rent yeah. even vans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's, it'd be worth if it. If you spend 200 and something <laughs> on buying it and then decide it doesn't work. That's true, too. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's well worth it, I think. Yeah, it is. It, is. it really is. That's definitely the way to go is to rent first try before you buy type of thing <laughs> now you guys were you guys in this when you hit those bad the bad weather or were you in your we were vista in our st- vista for that so we did hit some severe weather in our vista on our way to the winnebago rally this was actually sabrina's idea she's like oh you should talk about it on the podcast because there might be other people out there that aren't really sure what they should be doing in these types of situations where weather hits you and we've had two really bad storms so with this this one and then there was another one where we were already parked for the night in uh, Oklahoma. <laughs> they had a tornado <laughs> warning. But this one where we were driving was kind of sketch because the high wind, I mean, it just came out of nowhere. High winds all of a sudden picking up. And we were literally on the highway. But I said to Sabrina, I said, let's, let's see what these, I mean, we already had started slowing down. But I was like, let's see what the track trailers do. Because those guys and girls, they're usually on a mission to get to wherever they need to go. And they started slowing down. They were slowed down to 40 miles an hour, too. I was like, all right, it's pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could feel it. I mean, we're 12 foot 10 in our Vista, and we're 28 feet long. The wind was coming from the side. So that's like just hitting a, a wall or a sail. And it was pushing us pretty hard. And it's, you have extra stuff on your oh, suspension. Yeah. I got yeah. the safety, yeah, safety plus bar. I got the uh, Coney shocks. <laughs> And we have the sumo springs, and I could still feel it pushing us around. And we saw a lot of people turning on their four way blinkers and getting off to the side of the shoulder, which probably, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I would have done that even in my car, but in a, a motorhome or an RV in general, I didn't think that was a good idea at all. There's like a little bit of a curvature to the road. Yeah. And I thought between the curvature and the high wind, that's all it would take to really kind of blow us over. And then also, what I was concerned was, again, us being over eight feet wide, there really wasn't a lot of good space on the shoulder to pull over safely, I felt like, without having trucks trying to get around us. Um, we also saw people like parking under the underpasses of bridges, but again, we wouldn't really fit in those spots. So we thought the best thing to do was just slow it down. There were times that we were slowed down to 30 miles an hour. The, the rain was real heavy. Wind was real heavy. But we made it to a rest area. We were able to pull into the rest area. So my suggestion is once you get to a location is to park the RV with the wind because the RV is designed to drive down the highway at highway speeds, 60, 62 miles an hour. So with the wind, you're saying the front yep. point, into the wind. Yep. Point the front of your RV directly into the wind, pull in your slides and put your jacks down. That's what we did anyway. Oh, and you that, put the jacks down. Put the jacks down too. So I, I just figured, you know, that gives us eight points of contact instead of our four. And it, we felt fine after that. Once the jacks went down, we really steadied out. We kept the slides in because we've known people that put out their slides and lost slide toppers and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Or torn the slide topper. I also think, so this is going to be a mixed opinion. And too <laughs> so I know some people that say put your slides out because it breaks the wind up from hitting such a harsh amount all at one time. But I think by having the slides out, it creates areas of lift. I don't know if that's really true or not. Well, I know when we were in Florida, we would get some pretty good storms. Uh, we stayed right on the water for a couple of years, and we would put the slides in if it was a bad storm. We always have to. I, yeah. I think the slide toppers themselves vibrate, and they sound like they're coming off. Actually, I just remembered another storm that we were in Texas. Same thing. Wind started picking up. We were already parked at the campground. We were right on the water, and that got sketched for a little bit, and we brought the slides in it. To me, it feels better. It feels more secure with the slides in. 
Sabrina does have an app on her phone. So this is one way that you can try to predict the weather, but we haven't found a good app. Like she doesn't, she didn't even tell me the name of it. She said, I wouldn't even mention it because it's no good because she said it's kind of uh, what was the word that I was using earlier. It's a little too sensitive. It warns her about every little storm. It doesn't necessarily need to be anything severe. So it was almost giving out false alarms to the point that she turned off notifications on it. But, but Julie just said... Yeah, she uses the AccuWeather Premium, which costs $20 a year. But Julie does a lot of hiking mm-hmm. and uh, at, out in remote areas. And so that app she's found is pretty good for warning her of you know, serious weather that they need to take cover and stuff for. So, I mean, it's not free, but it may be worth, you know, the 20 bucks to help avoid or like in, in, if, in a situation, if you see a rest area or a place to stop before the storm hits you, if you get that warning, it's probably beneficial. It's worth 20 bucks. Yeah, I think it's well worth the 20 bucks. Yeah. And I know for like other storms, um, like that one in Oklahoma, we actually parked right along the side of a tall building <laughs> just so that the building would block some of that wind from the tornado warning. And that, that seemed to make a big difference too. And I guess the other thing is just be ready to leave the RV if, if things are really getting sketched. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's, that's always the hard call for us. Has always been when we're sitting in that RV, like, and it's shaking and we're like, all right, it's pretty scary in here, but if we get out of it, is it going to be worse? <laughs> like, you don't want to go from a bad situation to worse. So that's just a gut feeling that everybody's just going to have to make a call for themselves. If you have a tow vehicle, maybe it's safer in your tow vehicle and, and drive the, that tow vehicle into an underpass or be protected from a, a larger structure or something solid. Yeah, and I think one thing you have in the notes here is consider drainage, especially mm-hmm. if it's a bad storm because it doesn't take much to float a RV or a vehicle away. Yeah. So when we stopped at that parking lot in Oklahoma and parked up against the wall, we made sure that we were on the high ground and that all the water was draining away from us. I mean, it was still filling up, but we felt pretty confident that where we were, the water wasn't going to fill up so high that we were going to start getting flooded or even worse, washed away. I mean, we are 18,000 pounds. I would, I would hope that would be a pretty big storm to get us to wash away, but but you see it all the time, yeah. and like especially in the summer and the the big summer storms, RV parks, the RVs get washed away, yeah, totally flooded out and washed yeah. away. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's something to take in consideration too. Is just the drainage in the lot that you're parking at. Yeah. It's something to pay attention to. Look look and see is the water pooling where you're at, or is it moving away from you? Yeah. It's it's a scary situation though. It's tough <laughs> yeah. sometimes to stay calm and kind of think things through. But definitely stay calm. Listen to your weather apps. Listen to each other. Mm-hmm. Listen to your gut. Sabrina's got something I'm to say. I'm not good at staying calm in those situations. <laughs> <laughs> she usually wants to hide under the steering wheel with Beth. <laughs> I'm jealous of her. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. If you have pets, you know, make sure you keep them inside because they'll run off and they'll you won't find them. Yep. Loud thunder strikes or, or lightning strikes with loud thunder will scare them and you can easily lose your pet just like you can with fireworks. Or In fact, you saw somebody's pet run away, right, at... But that was at, at that was an at event. The, yeah. For yeah. The fourth, for, not even for 4th of July. They just had fireworks at the end. We don't even know if that dog Oh, was it wasn't found. even a storm. Mm-mm. No, it was 4th. It was uh, fireworks. fireworks. Yeah, fireworks went off. People's pet. I mean, we were all at a RV event, and uh, somebody's dog ran right past us. I kind of not chased it, but I tried to go in that direction to see if I could never find it. I don't know if they ever found it. I don't even know whose dog it was. Yeah. It was It was like pitch blackout. I just saw a blur run <laughs> Yeah, so a lot to consider in storms. Yeah. A lot to consider. Yeah. It's better to think about it ahead of time, I Definitely. think. Definitely. Have some type of plan. I know we have friends that have go bags so that they can kind of, we've never done that, but it is a good idea, like a backpack that's kind of set with a little bit of everything that you need just if, if you did have to run. I mean, it could be anything. It could be a fire even. Yeah. Just any reason that you need to like quickly get out of the RV for like... Like our friend says, he doesn't want to run outside with his Spider-Man on the roof. <laughs> he likes to have a, a change of clothes that he can bring with him. <laughs> That's another question I have about the van. Yeah. Um, I wonder, like, what do people do that full-time as far as, like, we have, we, 
underneath our bed in our RV, if anybody's listening and wants to break in, like we would keep like important papers and stuff under there. It doesn't look like there's a lot of room for that kind of stuff in that van. What do you think you would you would do? She would probably have to give up a little bit of our space and under the bed of both the, the both beds does have a little bit of storage. I guess we would put that stuff into like a lockbox safe. Yeah. And under underneath, the bed. yeah. That or eh, I was gonna say or that, that shelving area above the cab, but I would probably want to put some type of secure Yeah. So I'm going to go with under the bed also in the van. I, yeah. I can't imagine where else. Can you think of any better place? No, I, I, no, I think that would be okay. They also have like fire bags that protect against fire mm. and water. So if it wasn't like a solid safe, you could also purchase a bag that you could keep important documents. In oh, and too. you might be able to squish that down. Right. It might fit a little space. bit better. Yeah. Okay. Because I know in our RV, we keep uh, like a safe in the wardrobe closet. Yeah. We and have a safe under our, our bed. bed. Yeah. yeah. But I guess the fire bag, like you said, that would be a good way to save a little bit It would be a, a temporary, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I think it can withstand up to like 30 minutes of fire. So oh, they have to get there pretty quickly. Pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> What's the safe hold up to? You I know? think some of them are up to an hour. Yeah, they're pretty good. Like 1, so double, degrees double or degrees or something. Time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't thinking about theft, more like preservation. Right. You know, like right. yeah. you definitely have some important life documents that mm-hmm. you carry with you if you're full-timing. Maybe, maybe... Two with the van, you notice a fire a little faster than you would. In the class. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that fire extinguisher could put it out, but I think usually the best thing to do is just run. <laughs> yeah, you can replace anything else. You can't replace yourself. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So moving on to we got bad news for the RV market, I guess. Yeah, you know what? It's really funny, Sean. I, I I looked at a couple articles, and they all say you know it's slow, it's slow, and then. It, a couple articles said that it's not really all that slow. But this, this one here I got from RV Business. It's a Lazy Days quarter, uh, second quarter financial report. And I'm, when I'm looking at these numbers, it doesn't look good. So their revenue for their second quarter in 2023 decreased to $308 million, which is still a lot of money. <laughs> but it, this time last year, it was 373 So what is that? They lost about 60, 60 million, something. Yeah. yeah. 60 ish million dollars from this quarter. I mean, that's a lot of millions, <laughs> but it still sounds like they're doing good. I mean, 308 million for a quarter. I thought sounded. That's revenue. So that's you don't revenue. know what their actual income was off of that, but. Uh, uh, well, here you go. Uh, second quarter, 2023 net income was 3.6 million. Oh, okay. So here's, yeah. here's the difference. <laughs> So 3.6 million, which is still millions, but compared to 27 million yeah. for last year. So that that's 20, what is it? 23 million. Yeah. So they took a $23 million hit per, for this, just that one quarter. That's a lot of millions. That's a too. lot of millions. <laughs> but yeah. then if you go down uh, the other article you found about Cortez, mm-hmm. They seem to be doing pretty well. Yeah, that's what I mean. It just really depends on on which article I was reading. I saw a couple from like AAA. They were talking about high fuel prices, lowering the the rates. But then, you know, I looked at Camping World and Camping World's buying out several other dealers and like increasing their growth of dealership. But yeah, and then you look at like Cortez Campers that they just announced to sign up with six new dealers and be and they received a purchase order for a million dollars. So, which might sound small after talking about those other numbers, but Cortez is a much smaller camper company. So the fact that they just increased their sales by a million dollars while others are decreasing, that's what I mean. It, it's a little all over the place. And there's no less RVers on the road. It's just, I think we had that big buying spree during the pandemic and now. Like people have their RVs. Yeah. And so they're just not buying. But like when my RV was in service, it still took months because of how many RVs required service. So yeah, sales is one thing, but the actual people RVing, I think is still pretty high. Yeah. And this was just a trivia question that they they had not too long ago. So in 2008, there were 8 million, about 8 million RVers on the road. Now there's 11.8. 
two million. Oh wow! So the number has definitely increased, and there's more RVers now than than ever before. But I think the sales has also taken a hit from high interest rates, high yeah. fuel prices. Yeah. We don't have that same boom that we just had from the pandemic. Yeah. I, I feel like in the last two years, anybody that was thinking about buying an RV probably bought it. <laughs> so now you got now you're back to what they're calling well, not that anybody was not a smart buyer before, but now they're referring to this new buyer of today's buyer as smart buyers as in the fact that they are doing a lot more research than they were before. The the buyers are not as impulsive as they were before. They're going back to doing factory tours. They're they're looking into what really will fit their need and they're not quick to buy just any any rv when they walk yeah before before like during the pandemic if you didn't buy it when you saw it you lost it you lost it yeah Yeah. so people were paying msrp they were paying more than msrp same thing with the cars and now i think uh all that is definitely people are definitely more conscious of of what they're going to purchase so if you are an rver and are looking for an rv and ideally could pay cash for it you could get a really good deal right now now i think would be the time to get a deal i was talking to this isn't a plug or anything but i was talking to uh the dealership in arizona now now it's definitely not a plug because i can't remember their names totally drawing a blank on the name of the dealership it's a big dealership and i can't remember it's not lazy days oh well but they were saying that that they are back to wheeling and dealing like they are willing to negotiate, to move product. They're even marking stuff down before the consumer even gets there. Like they're not even, not, not necessarily playing games, but they're pricing things to move them because they're not used to, over the last two years, having inventory sit. And now for the mm-hmm. first time in two years, they have inventory sitting on their lot. So now they're pricing things so that they get a fluctuation because they don't want to old RVs on their lot. They, right. they need yeah. to move them out for the new season to come in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so now's the time if you if you're looking to upgrade and you have the cash, you don't have to worry about the high interest rates. You could probably get a really good deal. Yeah, and go to like RV Trader and and look at all the different prices across the country. It's so easy for buyers nowadays because you can see everybody's prices online. You could even screen grab that and show it to a dealer that's nearer to you. There should be easy ways for you to get a reasonable price or an honest price on an RV right now. It should, this time, right now, you shouldn't be taken over <laughs> by, by, by the dealerships like you were maybe a year to two years ago. And probably some good deals on used ones too. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. I would imagine, so the interest rate, I guess, is high on used as well. I didn't really look. Yeah, it's usually a little bit higher. I it's think. usually a little higher. Yeah, so again, like Sean said, if you can do cash, maybe trade in, and cash then you should be able to to walk away with a sweet deal right now yeah yeah you guys can let us know write to us Mm -hmm. and you know let us know have you bought an rv recently did were you pressured did you feel like you had the control or did you still feel like the dealer had the control over the pricing yeah that's a good question now this theme park, Kenny, I heard something (laughs) about this oh good i didn't realize it was as big as it's going to be I heard nothing about it. I just happened to stumble across this uh, article about this theme park slash RV park. And I'm glad that you heard something about it because I didn't hear anything about it. (laughs) Yeah, it's supposed to be like uh, they want to attract more people to the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think there's a lot of big investors into this. um, What is it? Two billion? Two billion dollar entertainment destination yeah it's supposed to be like the uh, i heard somebody call it like the disney world of of the midwest oh oh so it's gonna be like that big yeah well i know they were talking about so i wrote down a couple notes here it's going to be along route 66 750 rv spaces 300 cabins it will be 125 acre theme park that sounds big yeah uh so With good restaurants i think and like you know, not just like not theme park, restaurant. right? Yeah, 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 like a restaurant, restaurant yeah. uh, variety. And then they'll all have rides, live shows, family attraction, waterways, and a top tier three hundred room hotel. So 
the one of the nice things about this park is going to employ once it's open it's going to employ 4350 people so it must be massive i mean yeah. just to have that many employees but the good thing too is that it's going to employ a lot of people while building uh for all that construction so the one part that i got confused about because sometimes reading is hard for me but <laughs> the resort is being built on a 1000 acres in oklahoma and it says it's adjacent to a 320 acre three ponies rv park so are they expanding an existing rv park i think or, so yeah i think okay. they're more than doubling it okay so there's yeah. already an rv park there they're going to build upon that yeah okay so the original rv park was 320 acres but they're expanding it to a thousand i think so yeah you're saying it okay that's what i thought but it was written a little funny 750 RV spaces. That's a lot. That's a lot. I wish I knew how many RV spaces were at Disney, at Fort Wilderness. Like, I don't I, think there's 750. I don't think there's 750. I think this is definitely way more. There's probably the, oh, there's not 300 cabins either. It's hard for me to say. There might I, be. I would say maybe 100. 75 to, to 100. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Julie's bringing something up mm -hmm. for us. Fort Wilderness. 800 campsites. Oh, wow. Plus cabins. Oh, probably tent sites too, but this might include tent sites as well. Okay, so, so about the same, so, yeah. Yeah, so if you've been to Fort Wilderness, I mean, that's a huge mm -hmm. RV park. I wonder if they'll be spaced out as large as, because we, I feel like they give us a lot of space. A lot of Fort space, Wilderness. yeah. So I'm wondering, it sounds like they'll have the space to do it, but I wonder if they'll actually give us that kind of space. So the one thing I did not see was, I didn't see written anywhere where they had a, um, estimated time of it being finished or yeah or i didn't see that either like that i'm a little impatient <laughs> i th think i heard when i heard the thing on the news i thought they said 2025 but i could That's be wrong too far off i guess i could be wrong and oklahoma oklahoma city actually sabrina and i drive through there quite often so it should be easy for us to stop and check yeah it's it out. a convenient That's place like when you're traveling east to west yep it's a convenient spot to stop. So. so it should be easy 40, right? So it'll be close to I-40? Yeah. Yeah. That, I, think they'll, I think they'll have a great location. I just wonder about, again, weather. Weather in Oklahoma can be really unpredictable. But yeah. look at weather in Florida, I guess. Yeah. Disney seems to do just fine. I mean, they get hit with hurricanes and stuff. But I bet you that goes into play when they're designing the park as far as like structures and things like oh, that. Oh, sure, make, yeah. Make sure that it is safe. able to, with, yeah, safe able to withstand these storms they might even put like storm shelter like build in storm shelters with like the bathhouses or something like that yeah that's what we had in florida like the laundry room and bathhouse was a storm shelter oh okay yeah yeah that's that's what they do at the winnebago rally too all the bathhouses become storm shelters because iowa gets some crazy storms yeah. in the summertime too apparently <laughs> yeah so some some things are definitely changing up in the industry I feel like we say that all the time, but it's true. Like every, you know, we do one of these episodes like every six to eight weeks and the market is constantly changing. I mean, since we've been doing this show, it's always up or down. It's a, it's, it's a crazy market. That's for sure. So next we're just going to share some of the upcoming events that you'll be able to find, uh, Sean and I, I will be at the Overland Expo in Boulder, Colorado, August 25th to the 27th. And you'll be able to find me at the Winnebago booth. Sean and I will both be at the Hershey Show. Sabrina and I will be there from the 13th to the 17th. Sean, do you know about which days that you're going to be there? I don't know if you were going to be there for the whole thing. Probably that Friday or Saturday. I'll okay. Be there. Yes, and then we'll both be at the Overland East Show, and that's the 6th to the 8th. And we're actually planning on doing some live recordings from that show with Eric Sell. Look for us at these shows. If you want to specifically wanna, Aqua Hot, right? Aqua Hot. Yep. We're going to do an interview with Aqua Hot. They have a new product coming out for that Overland East show. So yeah, if you if you're listening to this, reach out to us, contact us, let us know if you're going to be at the show or not. Sabrina, Sabrina and I. <laughs> I'm so used to saying Sabrina and I. Sean and I would really like to meet you in person, chat with you a little bit, find out what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show. Uh, if you want a shout out, maybe we could even do a shout out you yeah. <laughs> for listening if we meet you in person. Um, but I think that is everything. Sean, am I missing anything? Mm, I don't think so. But I th we just want to remind everybody to 
leave us a review or a rating on the podcast platform. You don't have to type anything. Just click the stars, really, if you want to just do that. That's very helpful. It helps, helps us grow. And so we really appreciate it. And that's kind of uh, our your payment to us to leave us a review and or just a rating and that's payment enough yeah so yep, it's a free show we never ask for anything but yeah a rating or a review really does go a long way on these platforms it's what they use to rank a podcast so if other people are looking for rv related stuff it just helps us get to the top of that list so people can find us and like sean said we'd really appreciate that and if i could we did just get a new i just want to open it up here while sean's doing that i will just throw out a quick shout out to battleborn batteries and wholesale warranties for sponsoring this episode uh, they sponsor every episode for us and without their support we probably would have no show so we really appreciate battleborn batteries and wholesale warranties so I just wanted to thank uh, our most recent review uh, from July 22nd was from Dude7475, and they said, great podcast to hear things about the RV industry. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so we really appreciate that. Um, not only did you give us the five stars, but you also wrote a little sentence, and we Really appreciate you, dude seventy four seventy five, for taking the time to uh, to to let us know. And we do see these comments, and we read them, and you know it does mean a lot to us. We do appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much. All right, everybody, we'll be back soon with more episodes. Looking to get out there and stay out there? Battleborn Batteries Lithium Ion Batteries are here to power your RV, marine, and off grid adventures. Designed as an easy drop-in replacement for traditional lead-acid batteries, these reliable solutions have two to three times the power, charge five times faster, are a fifth of the weight, and last 10 times longer. Offered in a variety of models in unique sizes and shapes, ranging from 50 amp hour to a robust 270 amp hour, and backed by a 10-year warranty. Battleborn batteries are built to fit your needs and power your experiences. On the road, on the water, and off the grid, reliable power is here. Check them out at battlebornbatteries.com.